Hey, how's it going, guys? Welcome to my technical impressions of Scarlet Hood and the Wicked Wood. As always, this is a first impression series. I have not completed the game. I'm about a little less than three hours in. This game is about eight to nine hours long, so I'm pretty much at that point where I can talk about this game confidently and tell you what I think. This is a title developed by Devspresso Games, a South Korean studio. They're responsible for the Coma series and Vambrace Cold Souls. Coma 2 Vicious Sisters was their last title, and it was received very well. Scarlet Hood has similar gameplay elements to that game, but instead of a horror game, it's more of an adventure fantasy game. And it's pretty damn good, I gotta say. It's a side-scrolling point-and-click with a bit of a focus on combat, although it's not so much combat as it is evasion and stealth. The main focus here are the puzzles. Now, we'll jump back into the gameplay in a second, as the story will help explain everything a little better. The premise is actually pretty interesting, too. It's a game heavily inspired by The Wizard of Oz. Instead of Kansas, it's Kentucky. And instead of a girl on the farm, you're actually a band singer. So you go off on this adventure, finding companions, solving puzzles, and evading enemies. But there's a neat little narrative twist to this game. So the idea is you get ambushed by something, you get killed, you go back in time and you try to solve what happened and how to prevent it. Now the time mechanic is more of a narrative focus than it is a mechanical one. You don't have to do the same puzzles the next day. Instead you go to previously locked areas and explore more. So the game is much more linear unfortunately than you'd think despite this unique interesting mechanic. However, areas start to open up a bit more as you play. They have more puzzles, more backtracking, and more importantly, there are ways to end the level early or keep going and possibly progressing even further through the story. So an example of this is that in one of your many deaths in the story, you are killed by a flying monkey with a blunderbuss. Just like what happened after the other deaths. Except you've unlocked a new area to explore and you're gonna figure out how to stop this monkey from killing you. So you run around this new area, solve puzzles, and eventually you happen upon his blunderbuss. Now you do get a hold of some items from a character within this level, including super glue. You could load that blunderbuss with super glue and end the level right there. But here's the thing, you might not want to do that just yet. You'll instead want to use the other item that character gave you, a latch key, to access more of the level and potentially progress even further in the story on this life that you have, because you have a limited number of lives in the story. You don't want to just end it here, you know, destroy the blunderbuss, because you're going to get killed by something else, so maybe you'll find something else that'll help you later on in the story. And that's something I want to highlight here, the game has multiple endings. Now the only problem in this instance is that touching that blunderbuss doesn't give you the option to end the level if you decide to superglue it. You're immediately teleported out of the level and you have to progress, so... It's a subtle way of implying there's more to the level, but it can be frustrating if you forgot to save. Fortunately, save points are everywhere and there are four save slots. Just keep two save files close to each other and you'll be fine. Now if you're a big-brained sexy individual like myself, you might be able to solve some of these puzzles in Scarlet Hood and the Wicked Wood, but in all seriousness, they're actually not too hard. They might seem a bit intimidating at first as there is little in terms of instructions, and often the puzzle solving solution is not in the puzzle itself. You actually have to go around and hunt for clues in the environment, whether it's objects on the ground you pick up or clues in the actual environment that are part of the art for the game. Now there was one puzzle I did not get and I had to consult the review guide and I still have no idea how it's even solved. And there was another one I solved but only through the process of elimination, not sure if that was the intention, but I did solve it. There are a couple annoying things regarding the puzzles and problem solvings of this game. One being that when you're trying to figure out a puzzle you have to find clues in the environment and sometimes that could just mean clicking around and just hitting the X button until your character kind of stops suddenly and picks something up. Because the cursors in this game, where it kind of highlights stuff that you can pick up, they're kind of small, and I have mole vision, and I'm playing from the couch, so that is a little bit annoying. Another annoying thing is that sometimes your clue references are not exactly on hand, so you'll either have to run around in the environment and try to memorize it through there, or if you find a piece of paper, you're gonna have to quickly switch between the piece of paper that shows the clue and the puzzle itself and just keep going back and forth until you, you, you memorize it or something. But I say forget all that, whip out your phone, take a picture of the clue, 
have it in front of you when you're doing the puzzle. I really wish the game would have just had some kind of quick reference, a button you can press. That, that's just a little annoying gripe. Again, if you have your phone, just whip it out. You can still play this game from a couch without a frickin' notepad and paper, thank god. The puzzles in general are pretty nice. They're fairly challenging. I mean, I'm not really a puzzle game guy, but I did enjoy these a lot. It gives me some Resident Evil vibes, to be honest. The way you find clues in the environment, the way you just kind of look at a puzzle, and you're like, I don't... There's no instructions for this, and you just kind of... Just kind of staring at it, and then you get that aha moment, and it, it's very, very satisfying. I gotta talk about the pacing, too. In general, the game is, is pretty great in terms of how it sets everything up. The game utilizes the time mechanic to suck you in with some intrigue, and as you're playing, you meet a cast of fairly eccentric and interesting characters that help you out. The game is at its best when it's throwing wrenches into the mix with things like that time mechanic, or getting stalked by an enemy and having to play it stealthy. We haven't even talked about the visuals and the sound design. The presentation is just the perfect bow for the package. Colors are vibrant and the animation style is actually kind of nice. It reminds me a little bit of those old Flash games. There's a lot of bobbing and swaying the animation allows for and it's shown in things like the idle animations for every character and the way the fabric moves on Scarlet's clothing. But the music, the music is so nice sometimes. It's not the best in terms of length or transition, but man, can they throw on some nice, relaxing tunes. Music in a puzzle game is very particular. You have to have something that quiets everything down and helps you think so you get sucked in. It's just you, the puzzle, and a nice tune in the background. And this game does it very, very well. There are some problems. I noticed a lot of visual bugs and even a lockup on one of the loading screens for the pre-release copy, at least. Nothing game-breaking so far. There are some annoying bits very early on where you have to talk to people and collect items in a very specific order to progress the game. I hate that stuff. It is still a very linear game at heart, but there are some nice twists to it to make it stand out, and it does get a lot better as you progress through the later levels. It's overall a very solid puzzle game with a lot under the hood. The dialogue is surprisingly good. They go hard with the southern-themed adages and aphorisms in the opening act, and the dialogue just goes everywhere from there. But some moments had me smile and laugh, which is amazing because I can't feel anything anymore. So, job well done. I can easily recommend this game. The game takes around 8-9 to nine hours to complete according to the devs, and for 15 bucks for a game that looks and plays like this, that's pretty good. It might be a bit light on certain genres, but it's a great title. Give it a shot. Alright guys, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. I'm out.